life threw me a curveball and I turned it into a launch pad for success. So for the past 10 years, I had been working as a freelance videographer and I also did a couple of other odd jobs here and there and everything was good and fine. I was able to make a living and then I had a work accident. And so there I was at home sitting with a broken leg. I couldn't work anymore. Things were tough. And so I realized that I needed to switch careers. I needed to find a new job that I could do basically from bed. And that's when I bumped into coding. Obviously, I had heard a lot about it in the street, in the media, and so about how great the high-tech industry is what good salaries people make and so i decided to perhaps learn how to code and just try to get a job in high tech i did a couple of different coding programs first i started with the free code camp eventually i did a little bit of a boot camp or at least the pre-course work for boot camp and then eventually i signed up and i finished cs50 and i would say single-handedly cs50 has been the course that changed my life the most out of any course i have ever taken and so after i was finished with the course i right away started applying for jobs i mean i definitely felt like i was not ready to apply for jobs i definitely felt like i what do i know i'm not really a computer scientist i just took one course and here i am applying for jobs but you know i believed in myself and i really tried to emphasize in the interviews and in the CV as well, that I have a lot of other skills that together with my basic knowledge of coding would make me into a great employee that could learn quickly, that can get the job done, and that can communicate effectively. And so in this video, I have already given you a little bit of my background of how I got to where I am today. By the way, I am working in the high tech industry now. I'm a project manager for an IT company. Um, and I want to go in this video uh, over perhaps a few things that you should keep in mind once you complete CS50 and you're ready to look for a job. So the first thing is English. I have to say that the most important skill that I noticed uh, companies are looking for, at least in my area, is people with good English. That's first and foremost in many companies. And there are a lot of companies here that have customers outside of the country. And so um, I feel like being a native English speaker already put me ahead of about 50% of the candidates, you know, in my mind. So that's the first thing. Whatever you do, make sure that if you're not a native English speaker, I would say that you need to start investing into learning better English, learning how to communicate better, how to understand better. Um, this is something that I've noticed that companies are looking for. They rather have someone who does not know how to code so well but they can communicate with him and he can figure it out as opposed to someone who's a coding genius, but you can't talk to him. So that's the first thing. The second thing I would say is stop doubting your coding skills. I have noticed um, now that I'm at uh, the job that I'm now for almost a year and a half now, I've noticed that as long as I get the job done, they don't really care how neat my code is. They don't really care about my leak code ranking, they just want to make sure that I communicate well with them, that they can communicate with me, and that I get the job done. So for you, the main takeaway here is you already know how to code. Great. Instead of trying to figure out a new lead code challenge, stop worrying so much about the code and start investing in learning the bigger picture. What is the bigger picture? Maybe work on a project maybe try to contribute to an open source project, maybe try to build your own app, try to do something that takes a lot of different skills, combines them together, and delivers some type of product to someone. And if that product is solving a problem for that someone, bonus points. Or perhaps you might even have an idea for a startup there. Who knows? Point number three, once you finish the course, do not st stop coding. Don't take a break for two weeks, four weeks, you know, and then the time goes on and you forget how to code altogether. Make sure you continue putting in your two hours a week. CSFT has a bunch of follow-up courses that you can continue taking. They have the, uh, if you take their main course, afterwards you can take the AI course, you can take the web development course, um, game development. I saw now recently it just came out with uh, programming with R, SQL, 
you can continue coding. I recommend, even if it's not through CS50, you can go ahead and look at Coursera, for example, maybe try taking a, uh, a Princeton course on algorithms, data structures, um, or just go ahead and code more projects that you have interest in, maybe you are interested in building your own app. The bottom line is make sure you stay on the two hour a day coding track even after you get your certificate, especially if you got it for free. And if you don't know how to get the certificate for free, check out the video on the channel here. I have a video explaining how to get the CS50 certificate for free. The bottom line is you want to make sure that you stay on track. Another point that I want to emphasize is when you're looking for jobs, you cannot look for jobs where everyone else is looking. I applied to hundreds, if not maybe a thousand jobs via LinkedIn. You know how many responses I got? Zero. Nobody responded to me. So you have to look for a job in places where it's a little bit more niche or it's there, there's just less people there and more jobs. The ratio has to, has to be different. Some recommendations. So here locally, we have local job boards, whether it's by city or sometimes even by building. So there are some like technology campuses that have their own job board. I suggest looking there in your area, go on Google Maps, figure out where is there a technology campus or an office building that has 40 high tech companies there. What are those high tech companies? Can I go to their website? Can I apply through their website? Again, it's very easy to apply via LinkedIn. You just do a couple of clicks and that's it. That's what everyone is doing. And so the recruiter is most likely not even going to read your application. Try to apply for jobs in places where it's a little bit harder to apply. And ultimately, I got hired through a local job board that is meant for English speakers in my area. So it's like a very niche thing, right? So it's specific to my area and not just that, but people who are native English speakers. So that's what I would recommend. Try to find step one, make a list of 20 different job lists or website for companies, put them on a list, um, do a research, and that's step one. Figure out which companies or which um, job boards you're targeting. And obviously you're looking at either junior developer positions. You could be looking also at IT positions, by the way. There's a lot of IT positions out there that do not require as much experience. And you could also be looking for a paid internship, perhaps. I just saw a post recently, someone was looking for a web scraper. So you could look into that as well. And WordPress development, that's also something that people are usually looking for. Again, these are all things that you don't necessarily need to know how to code everything. Maybe there's a little bit of coding involved, but if you're like, if you need a job like tomorrow morning, you can start looking right away at these like positions that have a lower uh, barrier, you know, for entry. What I've been looking at recently also that I've seen a lot of job for is .NET. So if after finishing whatever course you did, you're able to learn .NET, maybe even get certified. There is a ton of jobs out there for companies that are specifically looking for .NET developers or even maybe like a junior developer to assist the team with you know more like lower level assignments. Whatever the story is, there are opportunities out there. You just need to be creative uh, in terms of how you you know you go looking for them. The last thing that I want to talk about, which is what I believe really, in the end, uh, sealed the deal for the company that I'm working for now, uh, and that you know, what got me hired, is all the other skills. So not only, uh, obviously, I can speak English at a native level, but I also have experience with UI, UX, and experience with design, and AutoCAD. Actually, I know how to use AutoCAD. I know how to build have some experience building mechanical devices and welding and working with uh, wood, fixing cars. I mean, try to develop skills that in a way have nothing to do with coding. Like if you want to learn how to code and you just want to be about coding, I have to tell you that there are robots that know how to code and you will never be able to be as good as them. So there's like AI that can code and can figure out what the best algorithm is. 
And so you're never going to be able to be better than that AI. What that AI does not know how to do is how to put that into a bigger picture. Like how to put that one algorithm into a massive project and that massive project forms a product that you deliver in a meaningful way to a, to a customer. That's something that in my opinion, AI is not able to figure out at the moment. And it's a question of whether it will ever be able to figure it out. This is where the human touch comes in. We decide what to build. The AI tells us what's the best way to build it. And so you cannot focus on turning yourself into a robot and learning the best code possible. That's not what you need to do. You need to focus on learning a lot of other skills, all the other skills, all the communication skills, all the creativity skills, design, learn design, learn anything, learn typography. Just go out there, learn philosophy, learn astronomy, learn math, learn anything that you are interested in, which is not related to coding. I guarantee you it's only going to help your chances of presenting yourself to an employer and telling them, look, this is who I am. This is my CV. I'm a reasonable person here. Um, I can do a good job for you. And so with that, we'll finish the video here. Hope you have a good day. Hope that you find a job. Leave me any questions at the bottom here of the video. I'm happy to answer, happy to help in whichever way I can. And wishing you all the best.